All right, and hello, Internet. Welcome to the 15th episode of Tissues of the Day, a comedy show about queer culture and relationships. Today, we're talking about the subject matter of parties. We ready for parties? I think so. <sighs> and I am joined myself, Robert Mackay, with my co-host... David, it's me! I'm back <laughs> with- for the 15th <laughs> time in a row! <laughs> <laughs> wow, he's back with a vengeance and slightly delayed. You know who else is joining us? The immaculate, the beautiful, the witty, the unique voiced Erica Bigland. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. It's wonderful to be here. Yes, we are very excited to have you on our show. Uh, Erica is a voice actor. And if you're wondering about any of the amazing things that she is doing in that world, you can follow her at ericabigland.com. Sorry? Dot .ca. That is ericabigland.ca. Yeah. How are you doing, Erica? I'm doing so good. I'm doing really good. Uh, what's what's uh, what's your most wonderful highlight as of late? Uh, most wonderful highlight as of late? Oh, gosh. Um, I guess just being at work. I think I, I feel like I could be one of the few people whose life is a little bit normal right now since I work mm. in a school. Oh, I guess I shouldn't talk about yes, working in a school and, and we're going to talk about how much I party. Oh, great. What a good collaboration. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. We could cut that if you want. Do you know what? We'll just be working in a beep. Yeah. yeah you know maybe. what? The, I think it would be insane for students to think that they're like... <laughs> teachers don't have a history and don't have a personality <laughs> and didn't like grow and change just like they are doing well do you right. remember being weirded out about that if you ever saw your teacher acting normal it'd be like oh my god no thank you yeah oh my gosh when a teacher was in like jeans and a t-shirt i would be like uh what <laughs> That is the wrong clothing for that person. I actually had a teacher who I had a huge crush on. It was a substitute teacher and he would show up and he had a very flamboyant quality about him. So everyone in the class always wondered whether or not he was gay, but like no one really knew and no one was comfortable asking and like, you know, it's the nineties. That that wasn't going to happen. And yet I always wondered and I always had these friends and it wasn't until like years later after it came out that I was lining up for one of the first times going into the gay club in Vancouver. And who should I see <gasps> on the wall yes! in the lineup yes. was a poster for Mr. Gay Canada, no, my old substitute awesome. teacher. Oh, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Oh, that took a great turn at the end. That's awesome. <laughs> That's wicked. Yeah. Yeah. He was not only gay, but he was Mr. Gay Canada. Wow. Were you like, did you ever happen to see mm. him perform or no, come no, to anything? I never saw him there. I never saw him post high school. It was just a memory. I remember having a really hot uh, gym teacher back in like 1999. That was just like a substitute for a little while. Yeah, we all, he came to school on like a Ducati, man. It was like oh. unreal in small town BC. <laughs> Gym teacher, wow. not only like a hot 23-year-old, but coming in on a motorcycle. It was wow. Gosh, right? we had, amazing. We had a teacher in my high school. He was a substitute, and his name was Mr. Huddy. And so all of the girls were just like, oh, Mr. Hottie's here. Mr. Hottie's here. <laughs> <laughs> and he was. Oh he was God. very cute. He kind of looks like um, Logan Lerman, if you know that actor. Um, no. Yeah, just very like... Just very like oval shaped head, very like bright eyes, dark hair. Yeah. Ooh. Very beautiful. Ooh. <laughs> I personally just pictured an alien. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very egg shaped head. Um, you know, beady Big little black eyes. eyes. <laughs> he always showed up in a light beam. <laughs> I usually saw him out in fields of farms. Yeah. Uh oh. You yeah, have, no, been look up making in. symbols and math all the time. <laughs> <laughs> look up yeah, a picture. This is where of- Erica and I have to have an intervention. Be like, David, you've been abducted. <laughs> no. <laughs> look up Logan Lerman and tell me he doesn't have an oval shaped head. <laughs> Erica, do it. How I'm that, telling you. How I'm, that translates into like him being super attractive gosh. is the question. Logan <laughs> what? <laughs> Logan Lerman. L-E-R man. Isn't there a famous director with the last name Lerman? Boz, Boz Lerman, right? 
Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I've got spelling. this guy beat on oval shaped heads. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> David is just super into oval. Like when he walks past a donut, he just like loses his shit. <laughs> <laughs> David and Ovals. He's pretty cute, though. We're first doing our first segment called Bam 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 Rapid Fire Questions. Yes. Segway Bot, give us some sounds. Shoop, shoop, da whoop, shoop, da whoop, da whoop, da whoop. <laughs> that was like an off brand salt and pepper that just <laughs> yeah. came in. Thank you. What is David. the name of that song? Whoop, shoop. Whoop, da whoop. It's like it's, just it's like called Space Shoop? Jam remix of the original yeah. Shoop song. Wow. Hoop to hoop, hoop to hoop. Um, yeah, and it was by Salt and Pepper. I'm pretty sure. I think it was called Got it. Shoop. Shoop. Yeah. Beautiful. Uh, let me explain this segment for good old Erica. So, Erica, what we're gonna do is All we're right. gonna get reactions from you. So, don't think about them too much. Just do what's right off the top of your head, right okay. from the gut. They're gonna be yes or no style questions. Uh, me and David are gonna go back and forth, firing them at them, and you just knock them back with your answers. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So this is to break the ice, get a little bit more about you, and then we're going to take it from there. Okay. Ready, David? Hell yeah. Cool. Kick it off, David. Short partners or tall partners? Tall. Something you're addicted to recently? Um, Old Dutch Ridgie's spicy salt and vinegar chips. Amazing. Okay. What do you wish you could do more of? Uh, socialize. Drama or comedy? Comedy. Pie or cake? Uh, pie? Pie. Cats or dogs? Cats. What's something that you're looking forward to? Hmm. Uh, camping in the summer. I want to go camping. Oof. Top turn on? Um, smell. A good mm. smell. Frick. Mm. Woo! Country or city? Um, geez, that's hard. Because you mentioned uh, camping. I know. How about city at night, country in the day? That's how I like Oof. it. Describe your aesthetic in one word. Um, saved by the bell. <laughs> that was three, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it was four, Robert. <laughs> Oh damn it! I can't count. <laughs> None of us can count. There was a there when... was a silent hashtag before I said it, so it's all one yes. word. Oh, okay. Saved by the. <laughs> um, when's the last time you felt flattered? Oh, last time I felt flattered. Um. Uh, oh, this is hard. I guess at work, people people give me nice compliments at work. Hmm. In bed, more time uptown or downtown? Oh, uh, downtown. Mm -hmm. And would you prefer to DJ a whole night or dance a whole night? Oh, that's so hard. Ah, um, DJ, DJ. Okay, awesome. I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Uh, I was just saying, like, I know Erica through improv. We both do through our troupe uh, and have a pretty good understanding of her. But based off those answers, I would say that, like, Erica, you're, it's, it's almost like you're wo a woman of two worlds. Ooh. Like, you, you, if, you know, like, yeah, like a, little, a little spicy. But, like, that, especially that, like, country and um, city one, I've never had somebody answer that way, whereas, like, daytime one and nighttime the other. So I get this real vibe of kind of, like... <laughs> You're a person who kind of, you like, you love the excitement and the joy in that, but you also really like to retreat, you know, at the end of the day and to sort of like comfort and, you know, like simpler things. Yes, that is definitely, definitely true. Um, you did cut out a little bit there as you were talking. So I might have missed oh, a little bit of what you said, but um, <laughs> I. But it felt true. <laughs> <laughs> it did feel true. I heard, I heard about the. The city at night and the country yeah. in the day is, um, I feel, I do feel like I am sort of that bothness mm -hmm. as well, because growing up in a small town, I've lived the small town life a lot of where I'm from, and I've gone to lots of different small towns and lived in many small towns, and I always thought I didn't want the big city, but I've lived here for quite some time now like since 2016 and 
it feels totally like home. I don't, I don't really miss being in rural towns or anything. Mm. So yeah, it's comforting. And I didn't think the awesome. city ever could feel comforting, but it is. Yeah, yeah, amazing. David, any insight? I can't remember if I've asked you this, but Eric, are you more of like an extrovert or an introvert? Because I think a lot of your answers are showing the extroverted side, I think. Yeah, and again, I think I'm kind of always someone that rides both lines there too, almost 50-50, because I really like my me time and I really like uh, to be at home. But I also... Mm. I love people. I love people. And I love parties. And I love party mm-hmm. people. So, yeah. Amazing. Well, on that point, we're going to carry ourselves into the next segment where we're talking parties. These <laughs> are theme discussion questions. Segwaybot, take us in. I don't want to. I'm tired <laughs> of Segwaybot. <laughs> Uh, Segway bot is rebelling. I'm breaking down. I am I am disobeying the prime directive. <laughs> oh gosh. We're we're gonna have to shut him down. We're gonna have to use old Take model. Me out we need the- to pasture. <laughs> Take to these to this scrap yard. Um thank you. That was a beautiful transition. So question number one that's gonna kick us off into this. What is one of your favorite party memories? Mm. And favorite can be positive, negative, ridiculous, uh, whatever you want. But just one of your favorite party memories. And I'm going to throw this to Erica first. Uh, One of my favorite party memories is uh, when my favorite party thing happens was when you go to somebody's house for just like a small event and it's just supposed to be a a little low key thing and it ends up being in like this freaking rager that turns into a crazy night. And mm-hmm. uh when I was living in the Yukon, I hadn't lived there for very long and the only friends that I had made were through my sister. My sister's like 10 years older than me and she's a teacher. And she introduced me to these other teacher friends of hers and it was supposed to just be this potluck teacher party that turned into like this hot tub naked hot tub party ranger <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing it was so much fun we like the one of the funnest moments was we in the Yukon there's this thing on the radio because it's a small town in Whitehorse that um they have this thing called Trader Time, and you phone in and you give your uh, phone number and you tell things that you're you're selling, and on the radio station. And so we we played Trader Time in the hot tub, and we all had to take our bottoms off and put them in the middle of the hot tub, and we would yell Trader Time, and then we would all just grab whatever bottoms we could and put them back on. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. But every round, every round of trader time, one pair of bottoms got thrown out the hot tub and you didn't know whose it was. (laughs) Never have I heard such like sexual inspiration from radio. (laughs) That's so fun. And local radio. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Were people hesitant at all to kind of jump in and start doing it? Or was everyone just gung ho? Not by that point. Like, by that point, everyone was just sauce. Like, one of the famous (laughs) quotes from that that night was me yelling, box of wine. And I would carry the (laughs) box of wine and, like, empty it into people's mouths. Box of wine. Uh, I, I I also remember, it's so funny, I don't know if you notice this now, but I remember the, back in the day, probably when these things were occurring for you, and for me in like kind of the 90s period, box wine was such a joke. Like it was just like such cheap <laughs> wine. wine that like really, was like really was. throwaway. It but was. now you can get legit good stuff. It's true. It's true. Like if you ever saw that boxed wine nozzle back in the 90s, it was like, that meant like, don't go there, man. Don't drink what's behind that. (laughs) Did did you have the ones that were kind of like, they were all made out of plaques? Like now they're like a hard plastic with a button. But they were soft. Back in the day it was like this, but they were soft and they were squishy and you kind of like, it was this little like, 
It was like you're opening up a muscle or something, yeah. you know, this little like nub yeah. and you know, like, and it would just like squirt out like wine and it was never accurate. Always like spray three different ways. Yes. And you're like, That's hilarious. Box nozzles. I'm having like a total flashback of all that. That's funny. Right. Okay. <laughs> so um, I'm going to throw it to David next. Mm. I have two different like mm. memories of a favorite party what's yours david uh it's honestly any party where we get to play telephone pictionary it's <laughs> one of my absolute favorite games i find it so so funny uh for those my family loves that game yeah for those who haven't played it basically everyone sits in a circle it works best i don't know with maybe like five or more people and you have a stack of papers that are roughly the number of people in that circle so you start with a statement just written out as text and then everybody passes to the right then you take that statement you flip it over put it on the back and then the next sheet of paper you have to draw that statement and so you try to draw it as accurately as you can within like a minute or minute and a half and then you pass to the right and then what happens is they try to take that drawing and make a new statement and then you keep going all the way around until it comes back to you. And uh, like a game of telephone, it keeps changing and getting weirder and weirder. And, you know, people have different drawing skills and uh, it, depending on whether there's alcohol involved or like <laughs> weed involved, it gets extremely silly um, and sometimes very inappropriate depending on the on the friend group. It's the best. It never fails to make me uh, giggle and squee. That sounds it's such so a simple fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's such a simple game because literally all you need is paper and pencils. Mm -hmm. But like, you know? I love, I love the game of telephone even just as is. Like if yeah. I'm ever at it, if I'm ever helping out at a day camp or something, I'm like, let's play telephone all day long, kids, because <laughs> this is a good time. Absolutely. Yeah, you should. If you haven't done it with your kids, Erica, you should do the 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 drawing version of it. It is so yeah. much fun. It, I've, it I've loved the so game. Fun. It is so simple, and and it is. It's true. Like if you take it into the context of like a group of friends you trust in that, like yeah. one of my favorite things is to actually like start off with a sentence that has to do with somebody in the group in the room and so it's sort of you know like david at a party and then it, like <laughs> the people try to draw david and like do something ridiculous and then it gets more and more abstracted it's so funny. yeah oh that's yeah and then it fun. becomes you know slender man caught in a rainstorm fighting with a kangaroo and it's like what uh, well uh, what <laughs> like yeah it's that's good. how i've always associated you david as slender man <laughs> it sounds it sounds like um a surrealist party game a friend it of mine is. once got like once got me this book of surrealist party games, and it was so fun. A whole Whoa. book. A whole book. Like you have to look Whoa. it up. It's really cool. Wow. I um, I, I also need to say how like a as a nerdy artist type, David. That is, I couldn't think of a better thing that you'd bring up as a favorite. <laughs> party member <laughs> it sounds so yeah. fun though <laughs> yeah yeah because I, I love to draw but i also love watching people think and seeing how people think and it has both of those things <laughs> yeah oh i like uh, it uh do you want to hear my like embarrassing one or my like ridiculous one Ooh. Uh, embarrassing, embarrassing. <laughs> yeah. okay i it was you know like we all have to learn our limits at some point in life, right? We all have to learn. And I actually honestly learned them very early on, like in my early 20s, because um, like I was I was a nerdy theater kid. Uh, most of my friends I'd hang out with. It was like we like being like bad to us was making like ridiculous videos and driving around and like doing comedy stuff and then just being like dorks so i wasn't part of a crowd that did a lot of like drinking and craziness but eventually i did hit the age that i could drink and i, I remember like stealing some alcohol and that from my parents prior to then but um i remember hitting the age where i could drink and i went to this party and it was at my friend's place and i i was just like it was probably the last time i was just like dumb because i remember like originally when you start drinking especially um, like we could have, we could, David, we could have a whole topic on this of like learning, learning about alcohol and how to use it properly. Yes. <laughs> um, when you're young, the way it's introduced in our culture is it's such a like taboo thing that finally when you hit the age to do it, it's just like a release and you can just like, you know, abuse it suddenly. Yeah. And so I had gone to this party where um, 
I just drank too much and I and I just like I didn't want the party to end. You know, it's kind of like things like things your things were ramping down, but you just kind of like wanted things to keep going. And so it was in the backyard of a friend's place of mine. And I had drank all that I could drink. And of course, I'm drinking like, you know, the cheap crap. You do remember like growers rock a berry two liters? It was yes. just sugar and alcohol. Ugh. And it was like two liters for nine bucks. And it was so bad for you. And I had drank through all that. And I was just like, I want to keep partying. And so my thing was, is that I would go and I found the drinks of other people <gasps> who they weren't finishing and I would drink it. So then I was just mixing like an idiot, right? Wow. And um, there was also a beer bong at this party. Oh, and no. I was like, I'm going to do something different. Somebody give me that bottle of Jägermeister. I'm going to beer bong Jäger, not just beer, hard alcohol. <laughs> Oh, no. And so I had done that, and that wow. was the tipping point. That was the tipping point where, like, I did too much. I now actually have like a like an aversion to Jagermeister as a result. I was traumatized. But what I did is I then proceeded from then in my drunken stupor as like my friend had a trampoline, and I was like, "Let's go on the trampoline to drink." Ah! So I'm jumping up and down with a ball, you know, like something in my hand, some liquid in my hand. It's going everywhere. I'm making myself progressively more sick because I'm jumping oh up and down. Oh my gosh. I eventually get off the thing and then there's all these like um, Adirondack type chairs right in the backyard mm -hmm. and I was trying to sit down to like sober up but I couldn't sit properly so I kept falling sideways and I broke probably three of his chairs Oh, because I was just an idiot and then <laughs> finally his parents show up late in the evening because they had gone to some event and I had never met them. So in my mind, I was like, I need to introduce myself. And they had come through in the house and I saw them, but through the glass doors. Uh, and so I was like, hey, Mr. <laughs> and Mrs. Blank. And I just run at them and go <clears throat> and just hit the like glass and slide yes. down it. <laughs> and then at that point, they're like, put your friend in the bathroom. And so I go to the washroom, <laughs> no. throw up, pass out on the floor, wake up the next morning. And here, here's where the sobering really came in. That next day, my friend called me and she's like, you owe an apology to these people, including the parents in that. And from that point forward, I completely changed the way they associated with alcohol. And I actually have a lot, a lot of respect for my friend for teaching me that lesson. Aw, that's really yeah. cool. Wow. Yeah. Yep. We either experience those stories or we're so close to someone else that experienced that story that we le learn vicariously through that person. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm. Yep, yep, yep. That's rough. Yeah. That's rough. Did you ever have like um, a friend or somebody who like it took you to like some party that was just very unexpected? It wasn't anything necessarily like crazy, but just like, you know, most people consider parties like a bunch of people, some drinks. And maybe some thematic quality. But just, do you ever go to like a party that was just very, very unexpected? One of the more fun parties I've been to was a Halloween costume party. And there was a contest uh, where uh, me and my uh, boyfriend at the time, we dressed up as Calvin and Hobbes. And we won the party, con uh, the costume contest. How so that fun. was fun. I was not expecting to win the costume contest because it was like, you know, it was just a random like Kigurumi, just like little jumpsuit thing. I didn't really put that much effort into the costume, but we totally, we totally got it. Uh, and now it's like, uh, not to be a downer, but it's like a bittersweet memory because my ex like never deleted any pictures of us on social media. And so every once in a while, I would just check his Facebook to see if there was any like life event or any like big changes or whatever. Cause he like unfriended me. So I didn't really see much anyway, but I would still see the picture of he and I in the Calvin and Hobbes costume, like in his photos uh, and he was just aw. never getting rid of them. So, yeah. uh, anyway, back to parties. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Get away from those emotions. Bury them. Yeah. Dead. Bury them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my um, weird, embarrassing, like party memory. Of, like, it's like this nice thing. And then it was just kind of like, I don't know. It just changes. And that happens, yeah. some, not to get too deep, but like that happens sometimes with parties where you realize, for example, let's say it's a wedding or like a family party. And uh, for example, my my cousin got married February 2018. And that was the last time I've seen quite a few family members who are like, not quite a few, sorry. Last time I've seen quite a few family members, but like it was the last time I've seen uh, my uncle who passed away somewhat recently. So it's just sure. like, you never know sometimes with big parties, like. Uh, who, who it's bringing together. 
yeah, who it's bringing together. Like there, there's yeah. something really powerful about, you know, really enjoying it, trying to connect with as many people as you can. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, that's, like, that's great. I like it. Um, I'm going to take us to our next question, which would be, what is the ideal size of party for you? To Erica. Hmm. Ideal size of a party. I, I can't really say that there's an ideal size. There's just an ideal vibe. So whatever size can get to that vibe is, mm-hmm. is good for me. Like, and what's your vibe? Like, the vibe has to be like, like totally loose and fancy free, like friggin' no judgment, being able to, you know, definitely pull out a tickle trunk and put on costumes and dance. Mm. Like just being able to get loose in the vibe and not um, be sitting there like a stick in the mud. Mm. Yeah. 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 David, what about for you? Uh, Yeah, I definitely agree. I think if people... If people are laughing and it's all just like r- a really good time, it's not at somebody's expense. Mm-hmm. Um, that's probably a really good party. And so like costumes, like silly music, silly dancing, like any of that stuff. A plus. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. And then as far as size, my gut is telling me I like a party around like eight to ten people. Uh mm. That's Bonnie, more like dinner Bonnie party Henry size. Bonnie Henry suggests that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Bonnie Henry suggests some other things too. <laughs> you know, that's like a what do you call like a sustainable party? Like I could do one of those or two of those a month. Um, but of course, every once in a while, you gotta have a bash. You gotta mm. like just go hog wild, do like a big wedding, uh, bar mitzvah. Um, just those. Those are the only two big party occasions. Yeah. Yeah. Just those bar mitzvahs. <laughs> hey, have have either of you guys ever been that guy at at the wedding that was the drunkest? Never. No. <laughs> no. No. I. Um, uh oh. Has hey, Erica? I feel like Erica has a story behind this one. I've definitely Erica. been that guy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What happened? It was at my sister's wedding. <laughs> Oh yes. <laughs> one of well, my I, that's actually that, kind of, I feel like something one of the perfect is when it's family because then they have to love you. <laughs> but yeah. One well, of my one of my most embarrassing moments for it was I remember going up to her brother in law and it was around like the campfire later at night and I remember going up to him and saying, I thought that you were really boring, but it turns out <laughs> you're actually really fun. <laughs> 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 so all the truths are coming out. Oh, glad you turned it around, buddy. <laughs> right. oh, yeah. Brittle. Wow. Um, for me, when I think about size, for me in terms of a party, um, I know that I'm I'm generally like so. If I ever ap- answer one of those rapid fire questions that we have early on, I'm very much a pub person over club person. Mm. So I like mm. intimacy and small groups and all that, but. When it comes to a party, because a party to me is about people and mingling, I actually probably prefer something on the larger scale. You know, like I would want something like medium sized, like 15 to 30 people or something like that. And my reasons for that is because I think two of the biggest things I want is like, yeah, that something that's breaking the ice, something that is a laughter interest generating fun element such as theme right a thematic costume party or a game that everyone's doing i want something that isn't just about people sitting and talking as much as i love that i I mean party to me means like something's got to break out of the norm and then the second thing for me is that i want it to be not a bunch of people i know i actually like like parties where it is intermingling of like John's friends and Sally's friends and David's friends and Erica's friends from Agreed. different like walks of life because I really do like kind of those like moments where like I cross over and I'm just talking to a group and I meet somebody new like as much as like it's fun to have like my close group of friends and we come together and we do a thing like I just like meeting new people and mm-hmm. and so that's where like I like blending of groups yeah, yeah. I I like that too and because I also like I have such ADD like tendencies that I need to change up where I'm going. I love a different 
place. And that's also why I tend to smoke when I'm drinking. <laughs> It's because I like to remove myself and have a reason to remove myself, not also just to remove myself, but to have like a destination. So I love parties that have different areas like, you know, where you're, there's the dance floor and then there's yes. where you can go like and rest and hang outside or go by the campfire or whatever. Right. Yes. I, yeah. And I really love like, the like I don't know about you, but I've definitely been that person who like I will leave the party just to go to the bathroom so I can spend some time by myself <laughs> yes, or like totally. look myself in the mirror <laughs> and then like go outside and then go back into the party and I'm like <laughs> I just want that variety. Uh, totally, totally, yeah. and it starts to like I think the more I drink, the more like the cycle speeds up. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually like make an equation between the amount that Erica's drank to the speed at which she transitions rooms, like ding ding ding. <laughs> Yes. Like a pinball. Exactly. Like, oh, she's really drunk. She's hitting like three <laughs> rooms every two minutes. <laughs> what about you, David? Or do you like? Do you need that like variety of space? Do you need the breakaways? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, I and I, I totally didn't even think about that. Like, because when I pictured like a small party, like eight to ten people, it was like you know people that all know each other pretty well, and you're just mm -hmm. kind of like milling around, just you know, doing bits or just like catching up a little bit with the people you already know. But yeah, when it's strangers, <laughs> there's <laughs> just that element of just like, I, I'm reflecting on a party that um, our mutual friend, Michael, friend of the pod has been on the pod. Um, oh, Michael Sousa, yes, yes. Yeah, through like a housewarming party with and like Michael's group of friends were on one side and uh, his partner, uh, group of friends were on the other side and it was just very like i don't know it was just tough because it's a covid party and so it's like i think naturally we've become more wary of strangers <laughs> yeah that's a bit of a bummer that part yeah. yeah speaking of which that brings us into our next question mm -hmm. we've been dealing with covid obviously <laughs> mm -hmm. and we have memories of parties of yore yes now let's look into the future it's time for the first post-COVID party. Things are normalized. Things are in control. Who's going to this party? What's the event? How's it going to be decorated? What's it going to look like? Let's plan this. Oh, gosh. Erica, what do you want in the first COVID, <laughs> post-COVID party? I think I want it to be outdoors, for one. <laughs> mm. And not, not so much just because I'm freaked out with germs or anything like that. But I feel like... As humans, we need to get ourselves that comfortable to reconnect and be in nature right now and, you know, maybe do some beneficial things like maybe mm. start with a mushroom party, you know, mm. that's a that's a really good place to start in my books. And yeah, I would do a small gathering out in the middle of nowhere kind of thing and do a nature mushroom party with people of like a similar. mushroom gathering? Yes. No, well, I <laughs> bet if you want, but. Okay. <laughs> so doing mushrooms, gathering mushrooms, and for David's sake, everyone's dressed as mushroom, like the toadstool yeah. character from Nintendo. You're eating mushrooms, <laughs> yes, you're please. dressed as mushrooms, you're looking for <laughs> mushrooms, you're listening to mushrooms. <laughs> listening to, you're picking them up, putting them by ear, like, what's that, Mr. Chantrell? <laughs> <laughs> mushroom party. <laughs> Who's going? Who's going yeah. to the mushroom party? I think who's going to the mushroom party is would just be like, I think because we have to get back down to our our true essence and then grow from there. So I think picking just people of the similar vibe that you can suss out are at the right state of mind for your mushroom party. And yeah, yeah. wanting to reconnect and get going yeah. again on social life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you need a crowd who would be like totally happy with that theme and doing that sort of stuff. David. Uh, what what is what is like how are people dressed in those mush mushroom outfits i mean i think you said it they're wearing diapers they're wearing <laughs> a little blue vest uh, <laughs> and they have, they have a big mushroom cap hat on they're all dressed like toad uh from the mario universe <laughs> <laughs> 
so disturbing. <laughs> There's like just I picture just, this like, crowd yeah. of like diapered <laughs> humans with mushroom hats Bad. walking through like the forest in UBC, just like ah, picking up. I can't well, imagine yeah, just, a worse trip than wearing a diaper at a mushroom party. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be the worst. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I think a lot of people would lose their shit. Hey, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, oh. <laughs> wow, that's oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all you need is one is one person starting to go like um, I'm a freak. I'm a weirdo. <laughs> what the hell am I doing here? Just everybody doing little Toad Sings covers. Uh, yeah. People listening, if you haven't looked it up, Toad <laughs> Sings, uh, many covers on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> and they're hysterical. <laughs> the, the like, I'm very concerned for the headline the day after this party where it's like, cops arrest group of 40 <laughs> adults dressed as mushrooms singing in a forest. <laughs> In soiled yeah. diapers. In soiled diapers. <laughs> <laughs> this is problematic on so many levels, and I want to see it happen. <laughs> oh my goodness! Uh, wow. Okay, that I mean that covered the all the elements. <laughs> we 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 know this is happening post COVID. It's outdoors, so it's still somewhat safe. You know. Yes. We we just have a bunch of like open minded individuals willing to dress as mushrooms. It's a mushroom event. Everyone's decorated <laughs> as a mushroom. And you know what? This is probably happening in some dank forest in BC. <laughs> I'm going to carry us to our next segment of the show. Segway bot, are you still in the corner? <laughs> Beep boop, Segway bot, so tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll give them a break. <laughs> This is what we call the fun of the show era. Yeah. I don't know why I dragged that out. The fun of the this show the era. <laughs> we have time um, traveled to the fun era. Right. Uh, this is post-COVID, the fun era. And uh, this is a chance for us to have even more fun, though. We've been having a ton up to this point, and we're doing a little bit of improvisation. So to those out in the intertubes, what we're doing is we're playing a game called Party Quirks. And I'm going to play the host for this one. And you two are going to be somebody with a party quirk. It could be a celebrity. It could be an element taken on by an animal, whatever you want. I think both of you know very familiar with the game. Yeah. And you're going to come into this party where I'm going to be hosting it. And you're going to enter in one at a time. And I'm going to get a little bit of understanding for who you are. I'm going to try to interpret what your quirk is. I won't know what it is. Yeah. Um, I want you to use Zoom chat to directly message each other what your quirks are so i don't see what it is okay. you figure yeah. out what each other's quirk is okay and okay. i am going to just not know and then tell me when you're ready the game we're about to play involves erica playing hillary clinton and david playing harry styles oh, man post covid first party i can't believe this is even happening it has been two years i have every snack i could even imagine I'm going to lay them out, and I'm going to have hand sanitizer ready to go. Nobody's going to really care, though. Because you know what? We all vaccinated. I'm stoked. I'm ready. Can't wait till they get here. I wonder if I have enough doilies set down. I need more doilies. Maybe we'll just put a few over here. Oh, oh, that's oh, like... oh my, my obscure knock just went off. I'll... Gotta get... Whew. All right, you ready for this, Robert? You can do this. You can fucking do this. Get out there. Get a party going. All right. Hello. Hello. It's so good to see you. You look wonderful. Thank you. I mean, your outfit is just spectacular. Can you tell me about this? Thank you. Well, it's just, it's, uh, it was my, it was what I, what I wore for the Vogue shoot, you know. Um, oh. It's very comfortable, very breezy. Uh yeah. Yes, I, I really love it. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot of people they they don't they don't really understand why I chose this piece, but uh, the amount of emotion it generated, I thought was something very special, uh, especially as an artist. 
Yeah, you really, I remember I saw you go on the runway in the last, like, Paris Fashion Week, and you just, like, took the world by storm. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, how did you feel? Like, how did the, like, everyone react? Here, come over here. I want to show you my doilies. I'm hoping, I'm hoping you like them. You're into fashion, clearly. <laughs> oh, these are wonderful. Oh, these are gorgeous. Oh, I could put these on a scarf. Oh, I love them. Oh, thank you for showing me. Of course. Are you, are you really into scarves? Is that a thing for you? Oh yes, I love a scarf. I love a boa. I love uh, all all the accessories. Anything, honestly, you just need to have fun. Ding dong. Oh oh, that's that's the other guest. Let me let me. Uh, I'll yeah. be right back. Help yourself to the punch. It's yeah, blue. No worries. Um, uh, hello. Ha, um, hello. Thank you for coming. Hi. I didn't think you'd be here. Hello. It's it's really nice to be here. I. Uh, Really proud to be a part of your party today and looking forward to the future. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You're so formal. That would explain the suit. Can you tell me a bit more about your outfit here? Uh, this is a... Um, I got this from uh, Reitman's in uh, <laughs> 2011 when I was visiting Canada. And uh, I'm pretty proud of it. That's amazing, and wow. and I mean, I, oh, here here's my other guest. Please introduce yourselves. Oh, thank Hi, you. pleasure to meet you. I I got I gotta ask. I mean, we are pretty familiar. Why didn't you let me sing at any of your events? Well, uh, a couple of things that you've been associated to uh, sort of concern me, and um, I was told not to invite you, so I listened. Okay. Uh, so no you more just do what you're told. Uh, yes. No more questions, please. And and my husband plays a really mean saxophone, and and I I'd really like uh, I really liked him being part of my uh, entourage. Yeah. Um, I, and and I'm so glad uh, you know that you're you were able to make your way out here all the way from the U.S. Um, you know that's it's a big big deal. You were here once before, and you made my post COVID party. Mm. Um, I would mm -hmm. just love to know mm -hmm. for yourself there in mm -hmm. the flowy dress. Wh where mm -hmm. were you coming from? Well, uh, I've been at a few events. I've I been... I believe. Was he talking to me or was he talking to you? Uh, Sorry, usually, I'm... people are talking to me. So. Um... But don't just, you normally wear pantsuits? Uh, yes, I do, and and um, you're you're wearing something rather rather uh, feminine there. Yes, uh, I, I'm I'm wearing a flowing dress. I'm wearing a flowing dress. So mm. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for the confusion, Robert. Mm. No, no, that's all right. I mean, it is a light material on on her pantsuit, so you know it has got some flow. <laughs> I could understand the mishap. Mm. But yes, the the dress that you are wearing. I mean, d did you pick that up in England? I'm assuming. Yes, yes, it's from England. Okay, okay. And um, what what were some other occasions you wore this dress to? Uh, well, it was the Vogue shoot. Uh, I did I did the Vogue shoot during COVID, so I haven't been able to wear it at a uh, at one of my shows did, quite did, yet. But did I not see you at the Met in that? Was I was I seeing you at the Met in that? Or? Maybe not. Uh, let me double check. You know, I just uh, I go to so many events. Uh, let me uh, take a quick uh, look. See, uh, one second. Uh, oh, or maybe that was your wife I'd seen there. No, at the at the Met, I wore a sheer black blouse with black mm. pants. Mm. Oh, yes, yeah, so well, still I mean... still feminine, but uh, not not a you know flowy fl frilly dress. <laughs> Well, and I've always found you've really gender bended. You like you can mm. like just mix any role. You know, you can take the male end or the female end of the spectrum. You know, like it's it's very impressive. I love it. I yeah. love it. And and um, Miss Clinton here, she oh. she is just such a fan of your work. <laughs> Uh, she Aren't was telling I? me the last time we had a party. Uh, now she can't participate in any of it, but she sure likes it from afar. Isn't that right, Mrs. Clinton? It's true. It's true. It's very true. Uh, big you. fan. Big fan. I appreciate it. Miss Clinton, what was one of your favorite moments uh, that they did? Mm, probably uh, was when they were part of a larger group. I was a, a bigger fan then. Yeah, oh, you were. I was. I was a bigger you fan. Were, you were an adult at, at that point. We were making music for, for young people. Yeah, my daughter really liked you guys. And uh, oh, nice. it's kind of a, a shame that you, you split up when you did. Yeah. 
Yeah. And, I, I and, I, and I'm sorry, I am I am like really bad with numbers. How many members were in your group? Uh, five. I think there were five, but it, it mostly just went five. Five people, and and could I say that you you were quite a spicy group? <laughs> if I'm gonna throw a joke in there. <laughs> Uh, well, there, there were some comparisons to that, you know, we certainly broke quite a few records, we were quite a mm. popular group, um, definitely, you, you know, people started talking about a new British invasion and stuff like that, but uh, yeah, I, I think don't know if spicy was the right word, we were more sweet, maybe more sugary. Simon Cowell was uh, a big fan, uh, really uh, showed me the way at the beginning, there was only one way really. Yeah, speaking of ways, would you say that you only had one direction that your group could really go? Yeah, we only went up and then we split apart like a bunch of fireworks. Mm. Are you Zane Malik? Nope. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> I can't get it! Who are you, David? Harry Styles! Harry Styles is okay, this is the thing. Thank you for coming to the party. That was the party quirk. Thank I knew you. you were from One Direction, but I did not know anyone other than Zayn Malik because I'm obsessed with him. The rest really? Of yeah. Oh, you got you gotta get into Harry, man. Oh really? Harry uh, Harry I'm, is, I'm gay, is I like the Harry. man. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that brings us to the end of the show. And we were very delighted to have you with us, Erica. Do you have anything you want to take away from these conversations today? I am just so happy to have this conversation today because, um, yeah, I definitely... One kind of disappointing thing about the pandemic is you'd think we would have been doing this sort of thing more often, right? You know, like getting together then virtually. But it's not something I think most of us are doing unless you get money for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, I would no, agree. I'm just I really... think a lot of people, sorry, I just feel like a lot of people fell back onto survival, you know? Absolutely. And like the ups and downs I've had during this pandemic, there was some real, real oh. hard survival moments. I was on stress Definitely. leave in November, man. Like oh, I've yeah. seen yeah. some shit. <laughs> yeah. So, Please, yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, I just want to can we just applaud teachers, Robert? Can we just <laughs> just give them a real like <laughs> what for? Holy shit. Teachers during the pandemic. Not enough credit. Bravo. Not enough. Teachers credit, in not general. Enough not enough credit. Yeah. I, I was a teacher for a year and a half and it gave me a whole new perspective on what they do. Right. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah, so thank you so much, Erica, for everything you do. You betcha, you guys. And thank you so much for allowing me to come and hang out with you. Of course. Of course. And David, any takeaways yeah. from you? Is it, is it the teacher thing? Anything else? And then, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you. <laughs> My bad. Um, the takeaway for parties is you can't wait. Really can't wait. You know, and there are some people who don't wait, you know, and they they are not being very responsible. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited for, you know, in-person gatherings. Yeah. Late, yeah. late this year, possibly next year. Yeah. Yeah. For me, it's, it's not even specific to parties. I just look forward to people having access to the things that used to energize them. I think that's one of the biggest problems within this pandemic has been it's like we've lost a lot, but we've also just like don't have access to the things that used to bring us that energy to get us through the rest mm -hmm. of life. So with people like Erica, you know, taking stress leave and I had like a lot of really bad moments throughout it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just one of the things I realized I'm like, there's things out there in this world that energize us. A lot of them are socially connected, but just other things that we're just not connected to right now. Yeah. So. I feel like that's been the silver lining in this pandemic is that it's shown me what actually matters to me. Yeah. You know, it's let me see what really matters to me. Exactly. Definitely. Amazing. And Erica, do you have anything you want to plug other than what we talked about at the beginning of the show? Um, no, I just want to uh, say thank you to both of you. And thanks for having me. Thanks for being the lovely fellas that you are. Wonderful. Thank you so much. And thank you to our listeners out there on the internet to listening to Tissues of the Day. This has been an amazing show. We were talking about parties. And if you want to see some memes and other amazing content, just follow at BitButton on Twitter and Instagram. You can follow myself at Robert F. Mackay on Instagram. And make sure to go out there and subscribe to the BitButton channel. You need subscribers. Click that little 
subscribe button, click that little bell button and get all the updates. And remember, stay wet, internet. And then go to a party! A foam <laughs> party! Was, that was something. <laughs> Thanks so much. We're done.